Hey everybody, what is going on? It is Crypto Bobby. Hope you are having a great day, great night, wherever you're watching or listening in from. Pretty interesting day when it comes down to institutional players kind of getting into the mix even more, even more, and a lot of, I think, different topics we can discuss today. One of the more interesting ones, I think, is Fidelity, who has been uh, pretty progressive when it comes down to cryptocurrencies, crypto assets. The CEO has been very progressive. They integrated uh, Coinbase basically to, to track your Bitcoin cryptocurrency holdings through Coinbase into Fidelity months and months ago. So they've been pretty focused, uh, I think, on being forward looking when it comes down to crypto assets. And some big news today that uh, Business Insider, my man Frank over there, uh, dropped that's rumored to happen. So we'll definitely touch on that. Also, Circle, uh, which many of you might know, is uh, Circle acquired. Poloniex also has a huge OTC trading operation, uh, is backed by Goldman Sachs and a lot of other big investors as well, applying for a banking license. And then the Bitcoin ETFs are back in the fold. I think a lot of people had talked in the past about ETFs and there was a lot of, of maybe demand or interest in ETFs in the past for Bitcoin and for cryptocurrencies. And all of those applications had gotten shot down by the kind of necessary regulators that is we're going to round two round three whatever it might be of these applications with van Eck and another company coming into the fold to have an application that they hope will be approved for a bitcoin etf so we'll dive into all that and more if you are new to the channel hit that subscribe button and the notify bell and if you've been here for a while hit that thumbs up button that like button helps to get this video out to as many people as possible really do appreciate that so Jumping into the first kind of point of discussion here, and this I think is is potentially huge. Um, this is something that I continue to hear across the board from large kind of from different hedge fund man, crypto hedge fund managers, people that are having conversations with very big players, uh, large scale institutional investors, um, those type of folks. And one of the biggest issues that they continue to say across the board is obviously there's a lot of other things, familiarity with this asset um, or familiarity with the, the crypto asset class and a lot of other things. But one of the big things that I continuously hear over and over and over again is there is not a trusted custodian service for cryptocurrency for Bitcoin at this point in time. And no large institutional investors, pensions, whatever it might be, are going to move into the market with any uh, you know, with any conviction or with any scale whatsoever until the custody service, uh, until a proper custody service is created. Today, like I said, Business Insider Frank uh, Shaparo over at Business Insider uh, talked a little bit more about Fidelity's move into the cryptocurrency world. And if you're not familiar with Fidelity, you may or may not have your 401k through Fidelity if you work at a big company, whatever, but they oversee $2.4 trillion in assets. So this is not a company that is you know, small potatoes. This is not some bucket shop. If you're not familiar with Fidelity, like I said, they manage or oversee $2.4 trillion in assets. And they have been previously, um, like I said, kind of forward looking on cryptocurrency and not open to it. They haven't been like a hey, cryptocurrencies are a scam and, and BS they integrated the pricing uh, and kind of information from your Coinbase account if you want to keep track of that in Fidelity so you can kind of keep track of your assets in one place, which I thought was fairly interesting. This was back in the day. It wasn't a huge deal, but back in the day, uh, and by back in the day, like six, eight months ago, they did that. Uh, and then also, I believe the CEO has talked a little bit about like Bitcoin mining in the past too. But one thing, so the two things that are rumored here is, is Fidelity bringing some type of exchange uh, solution into the mix and then cus a custody service. And this is something the custody service, I think, like I said, is something that would be absolutely huge for the market to bring larger players into the space. Um, now, that's not the only thing that's necessary uh, for that. And there's obviously a lot that goes on beyond the scenes. But if we are going to get to a point at some point in time where Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is kind of a, a new asset class amongst the other use cases, payments, store value, whatever it might be. But if basically if cryptocurrency and crypto assets are going to be a new asset class, you are going to need a proper uh, custodian 
for that. And Fidelity is one of those. There's a ton of companies working on it right now, but Fidelity is one of the more trusted names in the traditional financial services industry. So to have that name, to have that backing behind it and the resources behind it could be really interesting to see how this pans out. You can see right here from, uh, you know, from kind of one of the quotes there, Fidelity's reputation reputation for achieving best execution for the retail clients should really help to legitimize this asset class. So I'm excited to see how this might work with Fidelity. There's obviously other companies out there that are going through this process as well. Uh, BitGo, Kingdom Trust, a couple other ones too, but this could be uh, pretty big. It's just, in my opinion, it's something to keep an eye on uh, because like I said, you know, it's too, a, a, an asset manager or essentially not an asset manager, but a company that has its hands on $2.4 trillion in assets that has the resources, the knowledge base to, to build a proper solution there and really understands custody. I think the only other bigger name coming to it, if that happened, would be State Street if they could come into the mix there, which would be pretty awesome. Now, on the other side of the house, Circle is in talks to with the U.S. to become a licensed bank and a trading venue. And... As we talked about before, Circle acquired Poloniex, and they are very much in touch with regulators. And it's, I think that's it's one of the more fascinating things to me as I'm looking at this market as a whole is kind of the convergence between the, the initial cowboy nature and, and the anti-regulation nature of crypto. Uh, and traditionally speaking, what, what crypto was kind of the cypherpunk movement and a lot of those, the... the the libertarian focus and a lot of these other things. And now there is a convergence into basically getting in touch with regulators uh, and kind of opening up the lines of communication in more depth and a lot of other kind of components to that. And this is definitely one of those things with Circle. Now um, you can kind of go through this whole article. I will link to, I'll link to this in the YouTube description, the podcast description as well. Uh, but it's an article on Bloomberg. It's, it's, pretty in de- it's pretty in depth, it's pretty detailed. There's a lot of discussion as far as what Circle CEO Jeremy Lair talks about and basically saying, hey, they want to be a, they really want to kind of start working with regulators and kind of be a guinea pig for a, a truly regulated crypto exchange and to, to open up the, the pathways for legitimacy in this industry. So it will be interesting to see how this pans out. I have no idea what it will look like, but I think... Um, as much as some people may or may not want it, you're going to see continued regulation happen more and more and more. Um, so this will be a pretty fascinating to watch. One one thing that I thought was was interesting too is all the way down at the bottom of this article as you continue to go through, um, one thing that they said, so I'm sure not many of you still trade on Poloniex. There was a ton of, of negative feedback recently where Poloniex basically locked your funds if you traded there and you didn't, uh, have the like full KYC because they're trying to be a registered, basically they're trying to be a, a licensed compliant exchange. And they, I believe gave a decent amount of warning, but some people still didn't take their funds out. And now they've locked your funds until you are properly KYC and you literally can't trade them, can't do anything. Your funds are just stuck in Poloniex uh, until you are, until they run the, the, the necessary, know your customer, check your license, do all the background, whatever check on you. Uh, but as that's happened, they're talking to about the Poloniex has already delisted numerous tokens to conform with SEC guidance with circle at the hem helm. It may cut more soon amid an analysis. We're making our own. This is a quote. We're making our own legal determinations because you can't call up the SEC and say, Hey, is this a security or not? Uh, you can expect to see us delist further things. And that's the prudent thing to do. So Poloniex is out there saying, hey, we're actually going to delist more tokens, more coins from our exchange because we're trying to comply with the SEC and a lot of things. I think we'll see that. Uh, I think we will see that more and more often from some of these exchanges that are trying to be uh, more in touch with regulation and compliance. Some exchanges seem to be kind of like flying a little bit, not necessarily close to the sun, but listing everything and anything. And then some exchanges are going in the opposite direction because uh, they think that'll be a safer move for them for longevity. So that'll be that'll be quite interesting to watch pan out. But I definitely recommend giving this article uh, on Circle a read. And then the last thing, so Bitcoin ETFs. People have been talking about Bitcoin ETFs for a long, long time. The Winklevoss brothers were applying for that. There were a number of other companies out there that tried to apply for Bitcoin uh, to to create a Bitcoin ETF and to allow uh, investors to 
you're not familiar with an ETF, an exchange traded fund basically allows you to um, buy whatever is kind of backed by that ETF on whether it's your Scott Trade account or your E Trade account or whatever it might be, or in you know Robinhood, just basically buying it as a stock. Um, and people are trying to do that with Bitcoin, and a lot of the applications. I think there were like ten outstanding applica- ten existing applications to be an ETF to the SEC. Uh, and the SEC was like, hey, uh, get rid of these. We're not confident in this moving forward. We need to, to re- regroup on this. Uh, VanEck, which is a company, it's a financial services company that runs a number of uh, ETFs. And they are working with SolidX, which is more of a, a crypto related company. So VanEck and SolidX partners are working to try to create a new Bitcoin ETF that conforms to the concerns that the SEC had previously, which is interesting. And the big thing here is it's going to actually be backed by it's it's going to be backed by physical Bitcoin uh, and then also use a number of regulated exchanges that will allow uh, VanEck and this this ETF to keep track of the Bitcoin prices using this regulated uh, these regulated exchanges, not some random bucket shop number or something like that. The one thing to note, though, is that if we as we scroll down here, it is supposed to be one of the big concerns with these ETFs is the SEC is saying, hey, we don't want retail investors, which is, I think, kind of crazy, but we don't want retail investors to have to be able to get exposure to these ETFs because it is a highly volatile product and, and we just don't feel comfortable with that. So one of the things that Van Eck is doing is rather than pricing the ETF, like let's say at maybe the price of Bitcoin or at $100 or whatever the, the pricing structure might be, um, the share price of an ETF, because you can't buy half a share, uh, the share price of the ETF will be approximately $200,000, meaning that unless you are either a um, you know wealthy individual or a larger, um, a larger institution or... Uh, something like that, then you're not going to have access to acquire one share for $200,000 of this ETF. And they believe that will kind of help to reduce some of the SEC's concerns around the ETF. Now, I think this would be uh, a positive thing to, if this moves forward, granted, I'm not getting too excited about it because every single time there's been a big Bitcoin ETF application, it's gotten chopped down fast as hell. But this could be really interesting in my mind because it, it could maybe open the door up a little bit and allow some people that have a significant holding of wealth to gain more exposure to or gain any exposure to Bitcoin without having to own the actual underlying asset and worry about the custody and things like that. So this is something that you definitely want to definitely want to keep an eye out on as we continue to move forward here. Um, and then lastly, too, so just looking at the overall market as a whole today, it's been uh, actually two days in a row where it's been pretty nice. And for me personally, one of the one of the best performing assets, at least on on-chain FX, has been Binance Coin BNB, uh, which I have a decent sized holding of now. And the fact that that's up 16% on the day and a couple other ones, uh, 0x doing well, typically per usual, and a few other, uh, you know, a few other assets, but uh, BNB kind of leading the charge as far as maybe top 100 cryptocurrencies right now which has been fun to see and Bitcoin kind of steadying out. So a lot of my altcoins have been, Bitcoin has been crawling up one, one and a half, two percent a day for the past two days. And a lot of these altcoins are going up five, 10, 15 percent, which has been, uh, which has been enjoyable to see as of right now, not really personally making any moves uh, on the market, just kind of waiting for things to, to shake out a little bit further before I do anything too crazy. That's been kind of my strategy at this point in time. Quick heads up tomorrow, I'm actually recording it today, but I believe tomorrow I will have the interview published with Travis Kling, who is a crypto fund manager, uh, as well as Greg Rocco, who is somebody that uh, has provided me a ton of really good, he does just does awesome analysis uh, and really knows his stuff. So I'll have an interview video with those guys uh, where we're going to talk for hopefully 45 minutes, an hour or so, just about how to properly value cryptocurrencies. Travis has a a background in traditional uh, fund management and is a really analytical dude who can break things, break things down, whether it's fundamental analysis, technical analysis, a lot of different things. So that should be a great interview. Uh, So stay tuned for that tomorrow. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button, hit the like button. We'd really appreciate that. Thank you so much for your time. Crypto Bobby signing out. Have a good one. Peace.